Good evening, Holy Spirit. Good evening, Pastor Porter, Lady Porter, and my Impact Church family and friends. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I am Reverend Catherine Sams, and it is our custom at Impact to start each service with intercessory prayer, where we pray for the need of others as well as the need of our own. Tonight, God has blessed us to come to the end of 2022. And that is a blessing within itself. Not only are we celebrating the end of a year, but we're also celebrating our church anniversary. Amen? Psalmist says, had it not been for the Lord on my side. The Bible says, man ought to always pray and faint not. So tonight, we come before the throne of grace with the prayer of thanksgiving. Let every heart pray. Our Father and our God, it is once again your people come humbly before the throne of grace. We come, God, with a prayer of thanksgiving. First, God, we want to thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. For you are a God that changed not, and for that we are ever grateful. We thank you tonight, Father, for our pastor. We thank you, God, when he heard your word to step out and to start a church. God, it was his obedience that started impact. Not knowing, Father, that in three months that there would be a worldwide pandemic. But you are a God that cannot lie. And you're a God that's not short of your promises. And you're a God, Father, that when you speak something, it shall come to pass. So tonight, we're standing on that promise as an impact church family. Because it was your word that has allowed us to be here. So God, we thank you again for him being obedient and listening and moving. Now, God, I ask you tonight that you will allow your Holy Spirit to come forth and to be felt throughout this sanctuary, throughout the Internet. I thank you, God, for all of those that are behind the scenes, those that make it possible for your word to go forth over the earth and to cover it as the waters cover the rivers. We thank you, God, for that. Then, Father, I ask you tonight that let every song that's sung, every prayer that's prayed, every dance that's danced, God, every word that is spoken on your behalf, I ask, God, that it fall on fertile ground. And, God, that we will see the fruit of it. God, we thank you for the many that came, even through the pandemic. Over 200 people came. We thank you, God, for those that stepped out on faith and acknowledged you personally, Father, as they were baptized at our beachside baptism. 44, God. So we thank you for them acknowledging you publicly. Now, Father, as we prepare to praise and worship tonight, I thank you in advance 
for doing what only you can do. I ask God that you will move now as never before. I ask God as our pastor come forth to bring forth your word. I ask that his spirit is open to hear what the spirit is still speaking to him. Allow him to speak a word that will bring healing, that will bring deliverance, that would bring whatever we stand in the need of. And when we shall leave this place, let us know without a shadow of a doubt that we have been in the presence of the Lord and we have received everything that he, you wanted us to receive. And I say, God, as I end this prayer, thank you again. And I say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In Jesus' name, amen. for you. Hallelujah. We're, up, we're glad about it. Hallelujah. We've come to bless his name. Hallelujah. Because he's great and he's been good to us. Hallelujah. 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 Let's, let's praise him. Let's magnify him. Hallelujah. We've come to bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, let's sing. You sing with us. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. And all. And all. That is. That is within Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Anybody come to bless his name tonight? Singing that. 
that with us tonight, even you out there watching. Come on, everybody, let's bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, sing on my soul. Somebody bless him right here. 
Somebody bless him right here. Somebody bless him right here. Come on, somebody thank him right here. Somebody thank him right here. Yeah, yeah. Somebody thank him for the great things. 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 Great things he's done for me. Great things he's done for me. Great things he's done for me. Somebody thank you for the great things. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Glory. Glory. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, ah, thank you. Glory. Glory. Great and mighty is he. Hallelujah. 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 We've come to praise him. Why? Because he's been great to us. Hallelujah. Not only that, but I've come to bless him. Why? Because he's been good to me all year. Hallelujah. Has he been good to you all year? Hallelujah. Now let's stand and give him praise. Hallelujah. Some says I'll praise your name because you've done so much for me. Anybody else got that testimony? Hallelujah. He's done a lot for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Let's sing. Say, I'm praising. I praise the name. For you've done. For you've done so much for me. Come on, everybody sing that. Say, I praise the name. I praise your name. For you've done. For you've done so much for me. If I had a. If I had ten a thousand I couldn't praise you. Everybody say, I praise your name. I praise yes. your name. For you've done, for you've done yes. so much for me. Ha. Everybody say, I praise your name. I praise your name. For you've done, for you've done so much for me. If I had a, if I had yeah. a thousand, I could not praise you. I could not praise you enough. If I had a, Hey, let's praise him. Let's praise him. Lord, he's been good to me. That's why I've come to praise him. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. Hey, come on, everybody. If you don't mind, come on, everybody say praise him. Praise him. Let's praise him, everybody. Praise him. He's been good to us. Praise him. Let's praise him. Praise him. Will you help us praise him? Praise Will you help us praise him? Praise Will you help us praise him? Praise Everybody say, let's praise him. Let's praise hey. him. Hey, I don't know about you. I've got a right to praise him. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. Come on, invite somebody. Come on, let's praise him. Everybody, let's praise him. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. Come on, everybody. Will you help me? Everybody say praise him. Praise him. Let's praise him. Praise him. He's been good to us. Praise him. Whereof we're glad. Praise him. He brought me through. Praise him. I've got a 
got to praise him. He's brought me over. I've got to praise him. All year long. He's kept my mind. All year long. He's kept my mind. I had food to eat. I got a, I've got a house to live in. I still got the same job. I've got to praise him. 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 I should have been dead a long time ago. But God kept me. God kept me. God kept us. You owe him a praise. You owe him a praise. You owe him a praise. You've got a right to praise him. 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 From the rising of the sun to the very setting of the same. You've got a right to give him praise. You've got a right to give him praise. You've got a right to give him praise. Right there, somebody praise him. Somebody give him praise. Good to me. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. Everybody, come on, say praise him. Praise him. Let's praise him. Praise him. Cause he's been good to us. Praise him. He's been good to us. Praise him. Let's praise him. 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 Praise him. What did you come to do tonight? <laughs> what did you come? Let's praise him. Let's praise him. One more time. Will you help us? Everybody say praise him. Praise him. Let's 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 praise him. Praise him. Somebody put those hands together and give him praise. Hey. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. Come on, say, he's been good to me. 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 Tell it all. He's been good to me. I can't tell it all. He's been good to me. 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 Everybody, let's praise him. Let's praise him. Hey, everybody, come on, let's praise him. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. That's time, everybody. Let's praise. Let's praise. Now somebody praise him. 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 Praise him.
praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Let's praise him. 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 Let's give him praise. Ah, why are you praising him? Why are you praising him? Why are you praising him? Let me tell you why I praise him. He's been good to me. Let me tell you why I praise him. He's been good to me. Let me tell you why I praise him. He's been good to me. Let me pray you why I praise him. He's been good to me. I don't have to go into detail. I don't have to go into detail. He's been good to me. And from the looks of everybody in here, he's been good to you too. And because of that, and because of that, and because of that, we owe him a praise. Ay, ay, ay. We owe him a praise. We owe him a praise. Some of us didn't think we were going to make it, but we owe him a praise. Some of us didn't think we were going to be here, but we owe him a praise. Some of us thought we were going to be out of our minds, but we owe him a praise. Some of us thought we were going to be dead a long time ago, but we owe him a praise. 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 Yeah. Ah, oh God, we owe him a praise. Ah, yeah, we owe him a praise. Ah, hallelujah. For every mountain. Ah, he brought me over. For every trial. He's seen all of us through. And for every blessing. That was somebody's crew right there to run for every blessing. Can somebody shout hallelujah? For all of that, hey, I give him praise. I give him praise. I give him praise. I give him praise. I praise. As we move off now, as we move off the stage, let's all stand and let's testify together. This last uh, this last day in the year. I feel like whoa. I feel like running. I'm Sorry, right, I feel like running. Glory. All year long, not only did he keep me and he kept you, but everybody standing here behind me. There were some days we shouldn't even been on this stage. And I'm just telling you that if you only knew what it took for us to get up here every Sunday. We was worried about stuff. We was worried about bills. Some of us lost our jobs. Some of us didn't know how we were gonna make it. But we're here today. Each of us have not. Each of us have made it. Some of us got new jobs. Some of us got new cars. Some of us been healed from cancer. Sorry. Ah, I'm excited because I'm a witness what God can do. I'm a witness what God can do. I'm a witness what God can do. I'm here to tell you I've seen him work. 
I've seen him work all year. I've seen him work all year. With our hands lifted, somebody say, the Lord has done great things for me. Where am I glad? Say it again, the Lord has done great things for me. Where am I glad? Tell somebody next to you, the Lord has done great things for you. And you should be glad about it. Now this time you say, Lord, you've done great things for me. Where am I glad? If you're glad about it, if you're glad about it, let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Now, now, let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. recite our vision and our mission but first I want to ask are there any visitors tonight raise your hand raise your hand online amen amen on behalf of Pastor Porter and the Impact family we welcome you and ask you don't let this be your last time come back and visit us again We ask that you also recite our mission and vision with us. Are we ready? Our vision. Our vision is to be a Christian, multicultural, family-oriented, revolutionary ministry known for impacting the world through revelant worship, professionalism, and all we do in keen development of people who worship above all. Our mission to boldly change lives by reflecting the love of God through service, self-sacrifice, discipleship, and worship. We can make the impact. Amen. Enjoy the rest of the program.
Can you put your hands together for IPC and some of our tri-state choir members from Full Gospel?
sing with us tonight. Everybody say, Power belongs. Power belongs to God. Come on, everybody, I want to hear everybody. Everybody, say, Power belongs. Power belongs to God. I just want to hear y'all. Everybody out here, let me hear you say, Power belongs. Help them out, everybody. One more time. I want to hear you. Shout it out. Say, Power belongs. Belong. Now, everybody. Everybody, shout it out. Say, power belongs. Power belongs to God. Hey, come on. Put those hands together. Hey, say, power belongs. Power belongs to God. Clap those hands, everybody. One more time, say, power belongs. Power belongs to God. There is nothing to us for God. If you believe that, put your hands together. And let's give it praise. your hands together as we receive our overseer, overseer Morpheus Porter. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We have so much to thank you for. But after the choir has sung with such power, we thank you that when the power could have existed in a place that would have destroyed us, when the power could have been in politics, politicians, when the power could have been in the government, when the power could have been in militaristic forces, we recognize that it looks like we're going to see another year because the power belongs to you. Thank you for your power. Your power that kept back the powers of sickness. Your power that kept back the influence of poverty. Your power that kept us from hurting ourselves. Thank you for your power. Now, Lord, as we cross over from a year and a time that we will never see again, we want to hear from you like never before. Open the floodgates of heaven and rain down on this place. We claim it and we call it done in Jesus' name. And everyone who agreed said amen. Come on, if you're happy, the power belongs to God. Put your hands together. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you remain standing with me for just a moment, it's so good to see you all out here tonight. I'm grateful to see each and every one of you. Some of y'all I haven't seen in three years. Three years. Virtual church members. But I'm happy to see y'all tonight. And so I know that usually rain keeps the people away. But tonight it wasn't able to do that. So I want you to give yourselves a round of applause for pressing your way. Uh, through the rain. If you're online, we thank God for you as well. We thank God for our presence in this place for each and every person. I know that we have church in the morning, and so I'm not going to preach tonight like I don't know that, all right? But uh, I pray that whatever God has for us to say tonight, 
will help us to move and chart our paths into a new year. I can't go forward without acknowledging the great volunteers that helped to make all of this happen. And so would you join me in praising God for all of them, no matter where they are, no matter what they've done. We thank God for each and every one of them. Uh, I believe that if you came in this church tonight, uh, if you're a visitor, you may not have known what to expect, but if you were not, you probably were greeted or you should have been greeted from the door to the seat. And uh, that's because there's some great people who make that happen. And so uh, we thank God for them and others who help to ensure that you don't just come to church, but you feel welcome when you get here. Amen. Uh, also, uh, I want to, uh, I have to say this, three years ago, uh, we stepped out on faith. And um, today marks three years that the Impact Church has been in existence. Three years. Three years. Three years, and would you just tell somebody, and you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, COVID couldn't kill us. Enemies couldn't kill us. The devil couldn't stop us. And as long as we've got King Jesus, I wish I had a witness in here tonight. Everything else is going to be all right. And so uh, I'm grateful, and I'm looking forward to celebrating all month long because I believe that the best is still yet to come. Amen. 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 All right, let's get down to it. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, I'm going to give it to y'all like God has given it to me. I don't know how much time I'm going to have, but uh, if we can't get through it tonight, we're going to finish it in the morning. All right, so Matthew, chapter 12, verses 43 through 45, the message translation is what God has given to me for us on tonight. Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 through 45, and the message translation says this. It sounds kind of strange at first for a New Year's text, but y'all stick with me, all right? It says, when a defiling evil spirit is expelled from someone, it drifts along through the desert looking for an oasis, some un suspecting soul, it can be devil. When it doesn't find anyone, it says, I'll go back to my old haunt. On return, it finds the person spotlessly clean, but what? But vacant. It then runs out and rounds up seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all move back in. Whooping it up. That person ends up far worse off than if they'd never gotten cleaned up in the first place. I want us to preach and think on this thought, when evil gets evicted. When evil gets evicted. As you take your seats, just tell somebody, this is the year to put evil out. I read an article about things that Christians should do as they move from one year into another. And that article said, that every Christian should be able to picture that in the kingdom of God, there's a court. And in that court, at the end of every year, as they move into another one, they should be submitting papers for spiritual evictions. That you and I, at this point in our lives, and here it is 814 Eastern Standard Time, which means we got a little under four hours before this year is over. And this text suggests to us, that article suggests to us, that we ought to spend our last moments trying to figure out what is it or who is it that we cannot move forward healthily with. 
What habit? What issue? What propensity? What weakness? What secret? What temptation is it that is going to cause me to move on but not move up? You see, for most of us, we celebrate from one year to the next that God will bless us to move on. And we talk about moving on as if moving on is synonymous with moving up. But I've learned that you can live year after year after year, and God can bless you to keep on moving on, but you never actually move up. It's usually why people make serious commitments at this time of year, but can't hold to those commitments before Valentine's Day gets here. It's the reason why New Year's resolutions are usually the thing that is the less kept commitment in any human life. Because God blesses us with, he forces us in one way to move on through the next year. But he does not force us to move up in the next year. Since y'all are looking at me like that, I wonder, is there anybody here who can say, not only do I want to live to see 2023, I don't just want to move on to 2023. But if God blesses me in the next four hours to make it to 2023, I want to do more than move on. I'm praying that when the clock strikes 12, that I would have positioned myself not just to move on, but to move up. I'm going to ask you again because y'all scaring me. I said, I wonder if there's anybody here who can say, I don't just want to move on in the next couple of hours. But I'm believing God that if I make the right decisions, if I learn how to evict the right things from my life, if I learn how to pull in the right things and not just get rid of something bad, but pull in something godly, if I learn to stop blaming all my issues on the devil and look at the things that I've done to myself, if I learn that things ain't going to get better unless I make up my mind that faith without work is dead, and I can pray all I want, but if I don't do nothing to get what I'm looking for, I shouldn't expect nothing from God. I don't know about you, neighbor. You ought to tell your neighbor, I don't know about you, but I made up my mind that if I make it to the next three hours, I'm not just moving on. Tell somebody, I'm moving up. It's a declaration. I I wish you had said it louder. I wish you had said it like you came to church expecting God to help you evict the right things in the next couple of hours. I wish you came to church and left your perfect face and mask at the house or in the car and came in here acting like you're ready to be better, to get better, understanding that ain't nobody got it all together, but everybody ought to be trying to get themselves to a better place than where they were yesterday. I don't know about you. 2022 might have been good to you. It's been good to me, but I'm believing that even though it was good, that God still got something better for me. And so what do you do when you decide to evict evil from your life? Because Jesus tells us in this text that you'll notice something that the one who gets evicted is never happy about it. And he shows us that the new year and moving from one stage to another is more, is not just about what you decide to get rid of but how you understand it's going to respond to you because you kicked it out. Say it again, Pastor Paul. He says, I want you to know this, that evil spirits, unhealthy habits, uh, 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 vowing temptations, secrets of the heart, things that you wish you didn't do but you've done anyway, things that when you look back over your life, you say, if I could have gotten over that, I would be in a different and better place now. If I could just kick this habit, if I could just get rid of that, I can get better. He says, those things, everybody, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not an anomaly. You haven't done it. You're not the only one who's done it at the end of the year. Most people kick the habits at the end of the year. But most people get them back. 
Well, people don't like to tell the truth in church. I'm happy I got the mic. I, I said most people kick bad habits at the end of the year. They have a problem keeping them away for the rest of the year. I wish somebody in church would say amen. Hear this. And so Jesus says, he says, when those evil things leave you, he says, y'all listen to this. He says, it goes roaming in desert places. It goes Roman because you finally decided, I'm not doing it no more. I'm not entertaining it anymore. I'm not stooping to that level anymore. And it's got to go because you evicted it. He says, but then it goes out looking for an oasis because it was comfortable in you until you put it out. (laughs) He says, watch this. And it goes looking and it tries to find somebody else who wants to do what you used to do, but it's hard to find other people and the spirit ain't got but so long because it's looking for an oasis, a place to feed off of, something that can give it strength because the devil can't live by himself unless he got somebody that'll let him stay in them. Some of y'all will get that when you get home. You see, it's important for us to get this. He says, no, it needs something to live off of. And so it goes looking for somebody else. But because it can't find nobody else, it comes back to you. Hear this, because if you you want to do more than just make a commitment at the beginning of the year, but keep a commitment by the end of the year, you got to understand that the things you expel tonight are the things that's going to try to come back tomorrow. Preach Pastor Porter. He says, watch this. He says, it's out and it's roaming. And because it can't find nobody else, it comes back looking for you. And when it gets you, listen to your condition. Listen to the text. It says, when it gets you, it finds your house clean. It finds your life clean. Everything that you have, that you had to get rid of in order to clean up your stuff, you finally was able to do it. You made it through the whole year. You dealt with that. You finally had the conversation. You dismissed it. You moved on beyond it. It says you forgot about it, but it has not forgotten about you. It sees that you clean the house. You ain't watching it, but it is watching you. And just because you tell it to leave does not mean it does not decide to become a stalker and so it starts to watch you somebody say watch you just think about your evil habits and picture them watching you somebody say watch you just think about the things that you're going away and realizing that you're taking your hands off of it but it refuses to take its hands off of you and somebody say watches you it's it's stalking you it's decided that it's going to hang in there keep on calling keep on texting keep on nagging keep on keep on bothering you and bothering you and bothering you and bothering you until you finally come back to doing the things that you used to do and if that that does not work. Watch what it does. It said it's going to go out and find seven other spirits. Is this bothering y'all? And they're going to be stronger than it is, but they are going to have evil in common, and they're all going to come and move in on you. And this is what Jesus is trying to get us to understand, is that if you want the next year to be better, don't just make a resolution about what you want to get rid of. you got to make a commitment about what you're going to do to make sure that when you put it out, that it stays out. That when you tell it to go, that it stays gone. That when you evict it, it can't fill out another contract come back with a fake smile and a fake presence and convince you to stoop down and be who God told you you were better than in the first place tell somebody we got to put it out comes back can you believe that you can evict something in the kingdom court and it decides to come back anyway y'all gonna make me work hard tonight but I ask you a question you, 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 ever, you ever told yourself you wasn't doing nothing no more? <laughs> you, you ever, I know you, if your neighbor ain't saying nothing, you should get up and move. You should, you should, yeah, because you're sitting next to somebody who's lying in church. You ever, you ever told yourself, I'm not doing that no more. You ever, you, have, you ever almost destroyed something very precious to you and you said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I thank the 10 of y'all who being honest. Lord, Lord, if you get me out of this, I promise I ain't never, ever, ever going back. Now, here's the other side of the truth. And then God gets you out of it, and you find yourself right back in the place where you told God you would never, ever go back to. God says tonight, 
Not only are you going to be done with it, but in the name of Jesus, it's going to be done with you. I wish somebody would get excited here tonight with me. Anybody here can believe God? You ain't got to believe the preacher. I mean believe God that in the next year, God ain't got to fix everything around you because God is going to work on you. And you're going to realize that when you get better, everything around you has to get better. As I wish somebody here would, be, would say, this is the year I want. This is the year that I want God to give me the discipline I need. Give me the righteousness I need. Give me the steps that I need so that I can be what God has called me to be. This is the year to evict the evil from your life. This is the year to say no longer am I a slave to it, but I'm moving forward in Jesus' name. If you watch the text, the text says this. It says it finds your house vacant. Finds it vacant. Hear this, which means... You can clean yourself up. And the devil thinks when he sees that you clean yourself up, that you are the most eligible candidate for him to bother. And the reason why he thinks that, watch this, is because it says to us something about the house. That the house is clean. Tell somebody, yeah, it's clean. The problem is, though, it's vacant. Say it again. Come on. I wish, I wish y'all would wake up since you came to church. I said the problem ain't that the house is clean. If you got any good sense, you want a clean house. But why would you clean it up and then not have the right things in it to enjoy it? And so the text is saying to us, I, I preach past, but I, I'm starting to feel like preaching. It's saying to us that most of us spend our time in the new year cleaning up everything. But then in the next year, we're not putting the right things in place so that when something else that used to live there wants to move back in, it doesn't find it vacant, it finds it occupied. I'm telling you what God is telling you is that when you put the devil out, you got to let God in so when he comes back to check on you, God can peek through your window and say you can't come back. I wish somebody here felt like having church with me. Tell somebody, say, you know why I'm going to get better in 2023? Because when I let the devil out, I'm putting God in. And Satan cannot come back. Not near my family. Not near my marriage. Not near my children. Not near my job. Not near my investments. When I kick him out, he stays out because God comes in. See, one of the worst commitments, one of the worst things you can do is make a commitment to let something go at this time without also making a commitment to let something in. How, how are you going to say you're not going to do that no more and you did that that long? Because if you wasn't going to do that no more and you did it that long, you would have been able to stop doing it without changing your behavior. It, the reality is, is that the reason why you can't change it is because you have to accept the reality that you can't do it by yourself. And God is saying, if you just expel the devil from your life, I'll step in where he stepped out and you'll find out that he cannot come back and do the things he used to do. Because when he comes, he sees the house is occupied. God is in my heart. God is in my thoughts. God is in my words. God is in my emotions. I wish somebody here would hear me. And because I'm letting all the evil out of here and letting all the God in, I'm getting better and 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 better every day. You ought to help me preach this to somebody around you and tell them I see your future. And you ain't going to go back to where you came from. Tell them, say, in the name of Jesus, in the next year, you're going to get better and better and better and better and better and better and better. All right, well, I got to go. We got to go. But just tell somebody, say, I'm getting better. Tell somebody, I don't know what you heard about me but I'm getting better.
tell him, I, I had some things I wish I'd never done. But thank you, Jesus, I'm getting better. Tell him, say, I made up my mind that I'm going down to the kingdom court and I'm filing the eviction papers on everything in my life that's broken my focus, broken my discipline. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all come on for I shout, man. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to just praise God in here because you know what the future is. The Bible says, I know what I have planned for you, a plan to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. Hallelujah. 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 You ought to look at somebody and tell them, say, neighbor. Y'all ought to put your preacher voice on and say, say, oh, neighbor. Say, oh, neighbor. Say, I see you in the future. And I don't know how you look to you. Tell them, say, but you look better. You look better. You look better than you've ever looked before. Tell them, say, I looked at my face. And it looked new. I looked at my hands and they did too. I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. Hey, I wish somebody here, I wish somebody here would just walk with me. You ought to get out in the aisle and tell somebody, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. I'm walking. Come on, tell somebody, come on, come on. I'm walking, I'm walking. I'm walking into a new year and things have got to change. Don't be ashamed to walk. Tell them, say, I'm walking. I'm walking. I'm walking. I'm walking. I'm walking. I'm going to walk till I get healed. I'm going to walk till the bills are paid. I'm going to walk till the witness falls off. Have I got a witness? Woo. Tell somebody, say, tell somebody, say, if you ain't gonna walk, move out my way. I'm walking. I'm a one for the Father. One for the Son. One for the Holy Ghost. And I'm a dance on the devil's head for every problem I made it over. Tell somebody, I'm walking, walk, feel, walk, walk, feel, walk, walk, feel, walk, walk, feel, walk. Somebody ought to walk. Hallelujah. I'm walking, that's all. Come on, tell somebody, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. I'm coming out of this. In the name of Jesus. I'm coming out of this. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You ought to put your hands together at least and let's lift up a praise in this place until the devil goes running because he know he ain't got no place to live in here. Come on, put him out, put him out, put him out, put him out. Somebody, I'm praying. I'm walking. Woo. I'm walking. Tell somebody I'm walking. I'm walking, I'm walking. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. 
Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I'm walking. Yes, sir. Woo. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, say, that was my shout for 2022. Tell them, say, but give me 10 more seconds. I want to shout for 2023 before it gets here. Tell them, I want to shout about the crossover. I want to shout about the future. I want to shout because the eyes have not seen, because the ears haven't heard. Woo! That's what I want to shout. Thank you, Jesus. Will you stand all over this place if you don't mind praising God? I... Why don't you stand where you are? And I know everybody doesn't praise the same. I know. But listen, after what God has brought you through, don't you think it's at least fair for you to lift your hands and open your mouth you, you, you may not be a runner, that's all right. You, you may not be a crier. Or you may not move your feet with the rhythm. But, but isn't it at least fair to just wave your hand and say, Lord, I thank you. The Bible says God lives in the praises of his people. It says that's where God lives in your life. He lives in your praise. Which means if you refuse to praise him, you give God no place to live with you. You don't have to praise him like everybody else, but you ought to have something. You ought to have something. Maybe it's just a tear that rolls down your eye. Maybe you just whisper thank you. But I wouldn't serve a God I couldn't feel sometimes. Sometimes, I want us to just, I want us to just, just take a moment, just, just five seconds to just close your eyes wherever you are and to take a moment and just praise God. Just tell him thank you. I want you to take a moment to serve your eviction papers. In the kingdom's court. And don't worry about it, it ain't like man's court. You serve eviction papers now, it take almost a year to get people who don't pay out. But oh, God knows you ain't got that kind of time. God knows you need something and you need it now. 
I want to encourage you to serve your eviction papers. Somebody, the devil's in your mind. He's telling you, yeah, you can say certain stuff in church, but, but the world is waiting on you. I'll tell you what you tell the devil. The same God that's in this church is going to be with me out in the world. He's going to keep me. He's going to strengthen me. He's going to guide me. He's going to protect me. And if I fall, he's going to pick me up. There is no failure in God. I want to invite you if you're here. No, no, I don't want to force anybody. I know we have visitors. But if you're online, if you're in this place, I want to pray us into another year. And I know we can pray where, exactly where you are, but I believe there's power at the altar. And I want to invite you, if you want to come down, come on down. Let's pray together. Don't be ashamed. This is between you and God. The people you're worried about, they ain't got nowhere to put you. I just want to pray with you. I want to pray with you that what you put out tonight, the Bible tells us it's going to come back looking. But when it comes back into your life, it's not going to be able to talk to you and make you agitated and angry like it used to. It's not going to be able to make you fearful and doubtful and faithless like it used to. It's not going to be able to convince you that you can't make it without, you, without it like, like it used to. This time, y'all come on in, come on in. This time, when you put it out, it's going to stay out. This year, the Impact Church, our focus, our, our theme is the year of focus. Focus. You know why? Because you can't accomplish nothing if your focus is broken. That's why I believe God gave us this word, because God is trying to tell us as a church, as a spiritual community, that whatever you want, God's got it. But you can't get it if you can't focus. And so the devil will let you keep the desire, but not the discipline. I'm believing God, that God is going to bless you with the discipline you need, the focus you need to not just be somebody who desires something good, but somebody who has the tools and the spiritual fervor to not just want it, but to go get it. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. Because your word is better than life itself. Yes, it is. And God, we thank you for a word that challenges us, instructs us in the things that we must do to not live lives that impress other people, but to live lives that are pleasing in your sight. And so God, I speak over your people in this place tonight, whether they're at home or whether they're here at this altar, scattered in the seats. If they made a decision tonight to evict something, that does not help them be everything they need to be for you. I speak, Lord, a special blessing over their life. A discipline like never before. Direction like never before. Focus like never before. They will not simply be the people of desire. They're going to be able to pursue overtake and cover all these people Lord have made their declaration they have made their eviction and help them to know 
that that evil spirit, that demon, that influence, it's gone tonight. It's gone. It ain't leaving. It's gone. It couldn't stay. The devil can't stay where praise is being raised up. The devil can't stay where the word is being preached. The devil can't stay where people will praise instead of cry. The devil can't stay. And so we know he's not in here with us. He's gone. And we speak tonight that he's going to stay gone when he comes back. Him and his seven friends, they're going to find you in every area of our lives. He won't be able to get in our mind anymore. You said we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. You won't be able to get into our bodies because you said that our bodies are your temple. Everything that we are belongs to you. And God, we invite you now that since we finally got them out, since we finally got it cleaned up, come on in, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Correct us if you have to correct us. Come on in, Jesus. If we got to move some things around because this ain't the kind of house you live in, come on in, Jesus. If we've got to get rid of some more stuff that we thought could stay, come on in, Jesus. Come on in. We don't want to go. We don't want the clock to strike 12 a.m. and we're clean and vacant. When the clock strikes 12, we want to say this is a house where the Lord dwells. We call it done. We call it well. The eviction has been served. And Jesus' U-Haul has pulled up. And everything that comes with them is coming into your life. In the name of Jesus, if you receive it tonight, come on and put your hands together and praise God. Come on, y'all. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Listen, before you go back to your seats, if you're not saved, if you're not saved, this is not about you being a member of this church. You go to the church you want to go to. This is my job as a messenger of God, that if you're not saved, to make sure you don't leave this altar without being saved. If you're not sure that you're saved, if you're not sure, then here's your moment. The Bible says, confess with your mouth, believe with your heart that Jesus lived out and was resurrected for your sins, and you shall be saved. Can I tell you one of the best things about salvation? It ain't got nothing to do with what you do with your hands. It has everything to do with what you do with your heart and with your mouth. And so there's some people who would tell you you're not saved because you've done some things that are not right. But God says, I know you got to get yourself together, but if you give me your heart, I'll work on your hands. Hear this. Whether you're online or in this place, if you're not saved, take a moment and just repeat after me. And when you leave this altar, you'll be saved. Simply say, Jesus, come into my life. I am a sinner, and I repent of my sins. I believe that you can forgive me, and I'm asking for your forgiveness. I believe that you lived, that you died, and that you were resurrected for my sins. I accept that, and I accept salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. That's all it took. You saved. Tell somebody, I'm glad about it. God bless you. You may be seated. Come on and give God a hand praise as you return to your seats and praise God. If you'd like to become a member of the Impact Church, he will pick you, up you can email us at impactchurch2020 right. at gmail.com. We'd love to have you. I'd be humble to be your pastor. Get to know him. These fellow impactors will be grateful to be your spiritual community. Right now, you make a decision. There should be a link in the comments of your virtual. You click that link and stay in touch with us. Or you can email us again at impactchurch2020 at gmail.com.
Let us know that you want to be a part. We'll reach out to you soon and invite you into this family of faith. Goes by. Tell somebody you ought to know him. You ought to get to know him. Don't wait. Come on. Do it right now. Do it today. Just come. If you're from the Impact Church, why don't you invite them? Tell them, oh, come on. for what he has done with, in, and through us. Amen? Amen. At this time, we're moving into our moment of giving and sacrifice. If you're grateful that you have something to give, come on and put your hands together and praise God that we have something to give. I've given this challenge. I've been led to give this challenge to the church over the past three years. And so I'm going to do it again this year because God has let me know that this is the way that we ought to move forward. I want to say this to you, and I want to challenge you, and I don't want you to feel bad if you don't have it. It's a challenge. Y'all hear that? Tell your neighbor, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. This is the year 2023. Last year, when it was 2022, we pledged on New Year's night $20.22. When it was 2021, we pledged $20.21. It's now 2023. Guess what I'm asking for? $20.23. Asking that for the next year, that what you sow, that what you give, that what you sacrifice this time will be intentional for the next year. That as we move forward, we have not just said with our mouths that we trust God. We have also proven with our time and our treasure that, Lord, I trust you too. There's a whole lot of people who trust God with their mouth. There's a whole lot of people who trust him with their time. But, oh, when you start talking about that treasure, everybody gets quiet. I believe this, that most of us, if not all of us, have no idea what we usually spend $20.23 on. I believe that. And tonight, I want to make that challenge to you. It's not about raising money. It's about us making a sacrifice because David said, I cannot worship God and it costs me nothing. So tonight, if God has moved on your heart to be a part of that, and you can do that. If you're sitting here and you need an envelope, and you don't have one, you can raise your hand. One of our Impact Cares team members will come around to make sure that you receive that. If you'd like to mail it, if you're in distance in this place, you can mail it to Impact Church 2020. No, that's the email. You can mail it to P.O. Box 4589, Hartford, Connecticut, 06147 is the zip code. You may also give electronically via Cash App by searching dollar sign Impact Give. You can give via Givelify by searching Impact Church International. You'll see a Hartford, Connecticut address pop up in our icon. And you know that's the right place to give. Know this, that when you give, you empower us to do more good. And for that, we are grateful. However you're giving tonight, if you're at home in this place, if it's via envelope or via mobile device, why don't you join me in lifting it proudly to God? This is your seal for sacrifice and for worship. Lift it proudly to God as we go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you tonight. We lift our gifts, not to brag, not to boast. We lift it because we are not ashamed of the God who empowered us to give. Now, Lord, for every person who is obedient, who is willing and obedient to your word, I speak, Lord, that they will experience unmatched favor in your life because of their obedience. Lord, give them what they need. Provide for them. Provide for those closest to them. Give them what you promised to Abraham you would bless them with enough for their children's children. In Jesus' name, we call it done. And everyone who agreed said amen. amen. Come on, let's put our hands together as we get ready to give. Hallelujah. We've come to lift his name high in all the earth. Hallelujah. Put your hands like this.
Come on, everybody, let's all lift it up. Come on, sing. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We praise. We praise. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We, oh, Lord. we magnify. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We, lift. we lift your name. High in all the earth. High in all the earth. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We magnify. We magnify. We magnify the endless. Bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. tradition a few years ago when we have watch night where we like to just do something to be kind and to show uh, others and to wish them a happy and merry new year as they move forward and uh, when you came in you should have received some raffle tickets did everybody get one did everybody get one I guess that's a yes I don't know what y'all okay all right good and so y'all pull them out who, who didn't get one 
I see one hand over here. Do we have enough to give them one? All right. And so we're going to do this. I'm not sure what we got for y'all this year, um, but we always give away good stuff. So, so um, whatever it is, it's going to be good. Thank you, Mark. Okay. All right. What, now, what am I doing? Okay. Okay. So before I pull these, thank you so much. Before I pull these, uh, we already have an online winner. There was a trivia question that was asked online, and uh, our online river, uh, our online winner. <laughs> I just gave away. It's Minister Dion Rivers who asked the question, and so give him a hand praise. He answered, there was a trivia question. All right, and so um, everybody got their tickets? All right. I see some in the back. Y'all better... got to raise your hand like you want something. All right, and I got to wait for the other half of their ticket up here, right? Is that how it goes? All right, well, let me see what we got while we, where the prize is at. What, what is it? Oh, you're going to pass them out? Okay, well, I just want to tell them what we got. What we got for them? Gift cards to Capitol Grill. That's your spot. You got a ticket? All right. <laughs> All right. Wait for one more. All right, y'all got them? Come on. Come on, y'all, we got to come back to church at 9. Please. And we start at 9, you know what I'm saying? But the rest of us be here like 7, you know what I mean? Amen. And, 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 and some of us got to preach again in the morning, you know. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much. All right. All right. All right, so I'm supposed to read what, the last three, four, what is it? The last four, okay. All right, I call your, if I call your number, if y'all can meet Sister Samara, right, Mara? Yep, and they're gonna, she's gonna give you uh, your gift certificate. This is uh, the last three, the last four, 4183. What does uh mean? That mean close, okay. Four, 4183, all right, Beatrice, come on, there she goes. All right, y'all give her a hand. All right, take that one. So I don't, can you hold that for me? So I, don't, I was about to put it back in the bag. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. The next one is, huh? Yes, thank you very much. So, I'm, Mar, how many of these I'm pulling? Three more. Three more. Okay. This is 4207. 4207. 4207. Going once. Going twice. If they ain't checking their ticket. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Don't worry. We'll, we'll handle it. They said shake up the bag. They said you got to shake up the bag. All right. There you go. All right. This one is 4164. 4164. There we go, right back. Mr. Joe, y'all give Mr. Joe. <laughs> Jen, you think they're going to take you with them? No, they ain't going to take you. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Joe. Happy New Year to you. This one is 4142. 4142. The bass player, come on. All right. Happy New Year to you, brother. And one more, I got one more. One more, all right. <laughs> all right, last one. Here it goes, it is 4125. Is that you, Lori? Lori, give Lori a <laughs> Praise God, Happy New Year, Lori. That's good, Lori is here faithfully every Sunday with so many other people. And there's her daughter, she says she's gonna take her. <laughs> That's it, right? Y'all give them a round of applause. Thank you so much, Taylor, for helping me out. Let's stand together. I know y'all got to go to church in the morning. Now here's what I want to tell you. Y'all listen. Whatever else you do tonight, 
Make sure you still go to church in the morning. I knew the amens would be light. I'm going to say it again. Whatever else you do tonight, make sure you still go to church in the morning. Whether you're at home or in this place, look this way. I want to bless you. And now unto him who's able to keep you from falling, who presents you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, be majesty, dominion, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. And everybody who knew their eviction was served said amen, amen, amen and amen. Tell somebody Happy New Year. Happy New Year to y'all. Come on, put those hands together as you get ready to go. Hey. Come on, everybody say, we live today. We live today. Hey, come on, everybody. Come on, say, we live today. We live today. I know. I Come on, say, we live today. We live today. Everybody say, we live today. We live today. Tomorrow. Happy New Year!